Hey folks, we'll Brink here at uh, BrinkZone.com YouTube channel and BrinkZone.com website, of course. Uh, topic I want to cover today is arachidonic acid. And uh, one of the reasons, to be honest, that I haven't covered it in video form up till now is it is a very complicated topic. Not an easy topic to do in a brief video. So uh, I'm going to do my best, but if I leave something out or pass over something, you're just going to have to cut me a break on this one. Uh, and follow up, probably, I'm going to do some new articles and such on it. Uh, so arachidonic acid is from the omega-6 uh, class of fatty acids. It is derived from linoleic acid. If you know your basic fatty acid uh, categories, omega-3, omega-6, omega-3 is like fish oils, lax oils and such. Omega-6 uh, can come from other sources. And the basic premise, as we have understood it for a long time, uh, which is proven to be much more complex than we even thought, which was omega-3s are, are by nature anti-inflammatory, they go on to create anti-inflammatory byproducts and so on, and omega-6s in high doses go on to create more pro-inflammatory uh, compounds and such. And both again are essential to the diet, both are essential to life and metabolism and all that. Uh, the real issue is really in uh, ratios and amounts. So it, it's a mistake to ever say something like uh, omega-3 good, omega-6 bad. This is what some people have done is over oversimplified, and that's not true. Uh, what is essentially true is that in certain diets, especially Western diets, you tend to see insufficient omega-3 intake and an overabundance of omega-6 intake, and that, we think, at least leads to a number of problems. Now, as always, uh, the human body is just a hell of a lot more complicated uh, and complex than previously understood, and so I honestly have to revise my, my opinion of arachidonic acid a bit, and that is mostly due to Bill Lulu. Uh, of molecular nutrition, who really has to get the credit for uh, uh, beating the drum, so to speak, on arachidonic acid as, as a potential uh, muscle builder, as, as something that enhances building muscle and strength and such. Now, I'm not saying I was very resistant to it. Uh, as Bill will admit, after talking to him many times over the years, I was very open to the idea and always wanted more information. But let's, let's go back in time a little bit. Again, I, I pretty much went with the uh, excessive arachidonic acid as a negative to most people's health and you know didn't shy people uh, away from using arachidonic acid supplements per se but again I had hesitation and I had some some caveats that didn't allow me to really uh, go beyond that and so Bill and I have always uh, kept in touch uh, and so forth. Bill uh, did fund a, a study uh, some years ago. The study was um, uh, let's say promising, but the results of course did not reach statistical significance, which is to say there was there were some positive trends uh, in effect, but at the end of the day, you know, as a scientist type, um, I really have to go with where, it, it, is it statistically significant or not, and the answer to that particular small study was no. Uh, I will say what's one of the interesting things about arachidonic acid as a supplement is that, uh, is that feedback, real world feedback, has always been almost universally positive, and that's rare. And I have also pointed that out uh, in my books and in stuff that, that although the data um, wasn't very conclusive as far as athletes was concerned, and I had some concerns from a health perspective, uh, the feedback was always very good. And most people definitely felt that they got something from a arachidonic acid. So going forward, a, a recent study has come out, uh, which is not published yet. It will be out in the fairly near future. So I can't really give away too much on it, but it was forwarded to me to look at. And it is uh, quite positive with arachidonic as a muscle builder, as something that uh, it, uh, in conjunction with a good diet, in conjunction with eight weeks of weight training, uh, did show statistical significant effects on muscle and strength and body composition and stuff. And that's what I ask to see whenever I'm being hard on supplements and supplement manufacturers and whatever is to, is to see, uh, show me the data showing effects on those, those endpoints. Uh, there is now also, from a safety perspective, there really is a, quite a bit of data now showing that uh, small amounts of arachidonate fed to people, uh, about a gram to a gram and a half, are pair perfectly safe. Now, I wouldn't again push that, like anything, there's a dose response here. I mean, I wouldn't make that, okay, if a gram and a half or two grams is good, then three and four and five and six and seven must be better. I would not take that approach with arachidonate, but the data is pretty conclusive that in healthy people, about a gram and a half uh, appears to be perfectly harmless. There has been uh, studies with those doses looking at inflammatory markers and a number of health indicators and again appears fine across the board. Um, 
This does not, this does not say, however, that, for example, people with pre-existing inflammatory conditions might want to avoid adding arachidonide. This is really intended towards uh, healthy, active people looking to build muscle. Uh, it, does, it appears to be A, effective. I'm leaning more towards effective for sure than not. Uh, it appears to be safe. Uh, I would probably again lean towards using it for a specific um, time period time times period. Sorry, I'm getting I'm getting ahead of myself. I, but I you know I, eight weeks, ten weeks, what have you. I would probably cycle the stuff on and off. I would not just probably remain on on a, a gram or two grams of arachidonide indefinitely because you are of course getting it from other food sources uh, such as beef and eggs uh, and so forth. So. Uh, again, I'm sorry if this is a little bit all over the place, but it, like I said, this is a really tough topic to cover definitively in, in a simple video, really. It's, it's all over the place, and I know people are going to have additional questions, but I'm just trying to uh, update my position on arachidonate. Uh, I will also be following with, with some extensive articles at some point in the future uh, to get into more details, but for now, I have gotten questions. I, I'm going to give it a, a, uh, a partial, uh, mostly a thumbs up to healthy, active people looking to add muscle mass. Uh, again, I because of, uh, Bill Lewin has really put the, the energy and the time with the first person to put a supplement out, I would uh, definitely default to the molecular nutrition product. And I think, as you know, it is uh, very rare for me to uh, give a specific brand recommendation on a certain thing. But I, I just can't really see how, in this particular case, that can be uh, denied to uh, molecular nutrition, considering that they, uh, he and they were the only ones who really uh, spent their, their time going against the grain here on advice uh, with arachidonate. But uh, how does arachidonate work? Well, that is, again, a phenomenally complicated topic. Uh, it does have to do with, again, when you lift weights, there is a, a inflammatory, a inflammatory cascade that has to do with signaling, muscle signaling, that is essential for the muscle to then respond to the weight training to build muscle. Uh, there has been some recent studies, for example, actually showing that high-dose antioxidants taken right with weight training actually can be a negative uh, to potentially to gain muscle. And that's a whole other area that, that people are looking at. I personally am not going to worry too much about my antioxidant intake. I'm going to keep taking my antioxidants, but I, I'm not going to probably take them in high doses right around workout time. Uh, again, the, the answer is not totally clear, but what we do know is that arachidonate, uh, an inflammatory cascade that has to do with cell signaling, uh, is essential for building muscle, and that's probably where arachidonate is doing its thing. And uh, I think there are some actually, there are some uh, good articles, there's some data and such, and I will follow up on that uh, in more detail in the future. So I hope this uh, brings together everything you wanted to know in a fairly short video about arachidonate as a supplement. Uh, and I will have more, uh, issue, uh, more info for you in the future. And uh, you might want to sub up, as you can see. I give details and insider info you're just not going to get on other sites. Uh, I don't pull any punches. And uh, there's also uh, free five reports in my newsletter you might want to check out. I'm keep pointing here because that's where it's going to pop up. And I'll see you all on the brink zone.